So, hi, Steve from uh, Seaside Allotment Channel, and welcome to Project Hotbed. I've already got one hotbed on the allotment, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and I'm building another one because I just had a space for it and just fancied it. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't recommend these hotbeds unless you're really keen uh, and you've got a lot of time on your hands, like me. So uh, anyway, here so we go. This is the first hotbed. And as you can see, it goes down six inches under the soil. And you need well-drained ground if you're going to do this because uh, otherwise um, it will just fill with, fill with water. Now I'm on the highest point of my plot and this is very sandy soil, so it is pretty well drained. And then on the other side, uh, it's insulated with another six inches of, um, of soil. So, and that goes all the way around. So it's only the back that's exposed um, to the elements, which makes it fairly warm. Now, I've not filled the back up um, with insulation because I take the back off in order to empty it and refill it with manure. So let's just quickly talk about how these things work. So basically, it's a big box. Uh, you fill it with manure and other bits and pieces, uh, which I'll show you maybe later. Um, but basically manure. I mean, this this one, um, because of the... the horse bedding that I was using um, it didn't have as much actual droppings in it as I would have liked so I added chicken manure pellets as well so basically it was horse bedding not just pure manure horse bedding um, chicken pellets and, and a few leaves and that big um, area volume of um, the horse manure and those amendments that heats up and it heats up uh, a top layer uh, which is kind of in this area here of soil um, which in my case is just is garden compost mostly um, and the plants grow in that and nothing freezes because it's generating heat from February uh, through to April and it basically makes the temperature in the soil but not quite in the air above the soil uh, into uh, something equivalent to May so you can grow pretty much you know, anything in these hotbeds and I put a top on so when it's got its top on it looks like this which is just a coal frame so basically it's a raised bed base and a coal frame top and that's what it's going to look like. So I've just dug a big hole here because I've just taken out some um, black currants, which I don't like. And so the base, the raised bed base, will just drop in there. And obviously it'll be levelled. It doesn't actually look quite level now. Um, and then I'll just build, you know, more frames on top of that and then a cold frame top on top of that and it's fairly expensive but the thing is we crop so much value off this plot um, that and it's a hobby so it doesn't matter that it costs 40 quid um, and you know for me it just extends the fun of gardening into the winter and it's just cool to, to try it and see all the different things and experiment with all the different things that grow when you can make February into May. And it makes the uh, prospect of eating all year round from the allotment even more uh, viable. So there we go, there's the hole. And in future videos, which I'll just append to this one, um, I will build the hotbed. Uh, eventually I'll probably fill it as well but I'll probably release this before I get around to filling it uh, just in case anybody else wants to have a go there are lots of different ways of building hotbeds this is the probably the worst of those ways um, but it's the way that's neat and tidy and fits in with my allotment and 
the kind of way that I like to garden. If you just want to do it, you know, in a much more practical fashion, um, then you can just kind of, you know, make a frame from straw brails instead of wood uh, and fill it with manure and put a freestanding cold frame top on them on there. Uh, anyway, if you Google hotbed, you'll see uh, a more traditional style of doing it. But uh, this is the way that I've chosen to do it, and it worked fantastically well last year, so uh, I'm hoping for similarly good prospects this year. So, there we go. See you soon. So, we're back, and it's building day. And so, obviously, I dug the hole, and I've put the uh, first of the raised bed frames in that hole and lined it with weed suppressant membrane because this is a very weedy area and I've lined it up with this bed near enough and leveled it so hopefully it will look approximately correct there's a tiny gap here which I think I can squeeze through um, so I'm pretty much ready to build and uh, I've just show you what I've done so I've basically uh, rested these planks in uh, a container full of wood preservative for 30 seconds so that the um, wood preservative goes you know like half an inch into this uh, already treated wood and I've put stainless steel screws in here so that they don't rust and that's pretty much it so ready to go so the assembly process is pretty quick and easy um, the local timber shop St Anne's Timber uh, pre-cuts all the wood for me and it's just all screwed together with stainless steel screws which makes it easy to disassemble and repair and all that sort of thing um, yep yeah, there's not much more to say really um, other than the uh, top pieces of the hotbed are just the side pieces cut in half um, and you'll just see me putting those on now and there we go job done and so that's it that's most of the job done and what have we got a big box interestingly um, this two inch timber is slightly smaller than the one inch timber and every board that I put in basically the gap increased so I ended up with almost an inch at the top which if it was a cold frame would have been a bit more of an issue but in a hot bed it's going to result in a little venting strip all the way along the top there and that is just perfect for a hot bed because it's quite warm it gets quite uh, damp and so even when it's closed in the strongest gales etc etc it's really important to keep a little bit of venting so this is just perfect and I kind of did the same on the other one but not quite to the same extent but yeah really happy with that so what still needs to be done I just need to put a couple of supports in like this just to hold everything together um, because at the moment they're basically just stacked and um, then I need to put the lid on so I will get on with that and I'll show you that so there we go there's just this little supports just popped in you don't really need very much because it's extremely rigid even though it's all just uh, sat on top of each other because it's pretty heavy um, but these are just useful when it's empty really um, because when it's empty obviously there's nothing kind of holding it all together but when it's full it's uh, it's definitely not going to go anywhere and now with these little supports it's not going to go anywhere either so that is the frame all finished so let's just quickly talk about how it all works again so basically you fill the box with manure and unlike when you're composting uh, where you want lots of air you actually don't want air in here because you get more fungal composting so you need a bit of wood in here so uh, the uh, the horse manure that uses wood chip bedding that we get on this site actually works really well 
I add a few handfuls per barrel load of chicken manure pellets as well uh, just to add a bit of extra nitrogen because I've not got any nitrogen in there other than the horse droppings themselves um, and you basically fill it to about here um, so 18 inches and then you put um, about three inches of soil on top and so you're basically growing things that only need about three inches of, of soil uh, for one of these bays i am actually going to make it slightly shallower um, because i'm going to put six inches of soil in because i want to grow early carrots uh, stubby stubby little carrots um, uh, so we'll see how that goes but 18 inches most of which as you can see from this soil here is going to be underground um, and so there's only the t top two boards and you can see this there's only the top two boards that uh, don't have soil in fact once the bark chips are down on here it'll actually be only really the uh, well the whole thing will basically be underground but this is raised up here with this soil this is the soil I've just dug out of this hole um, and keeping it underground obviously keeps it much more insulated it's not insulated at the back because I need to take these boards off um, that are on the back so just get out just change the tape. these screws here are taken out these boards come off uh, and that allows, makes it easy to shovel uh, all of the manure out um, and shovel it in or barrow it in and shovel it out so it's, it's a fairly quick process and obviously it generates um, you know a fair amount of compost at the end of uh, the season as well so effectively this is like having uh, two extra compost bins um, working so as a result of that i do add also uh, the rock dust to this so and some leaves and some seaweed and bits and pieces so basically this is my normal compost mix um, and you know what comes out of it is a compost that's ready to go probably in my black bins but i might it, we'll see how it goes it might be good enough for uh, top dressing so there we go and so now we'll just go and put the top on uh, here we are job done so i've leveled this uh, soil path and put some fabric on and that will be covered with uh, wood chips uh, at some point in the future and so that's all nicely insulated on this side and we've got bark chips around here and when it's uh, nice weather this will be open like this on its vent and there'll be three of these vents of course um, and it will look like that one over there uh, and it's strapped down with bungee cords so it's uh, nice and resistant to the wind and obviously when the weather's really foul uh, these will come out and it'll drop down like this and it will still be vented because it'll have this little side vent here and again as i say that's kind of perfect for a hotbed keeps it uh, vented but it's still generating plenty of warmth so it shouldn't freeze and then when it needs watering it will be opened up like this and let back on here and this is a two skinned top so that uh, the water will just drain off it because all my others are single skinned and the water gathers inside here inside here but uh, yeah so these beds need quite a lot of water and so it's the two, two of them have both got double skin tops so they can be opened up in winter the coal frames don't need much water so um, it doesn't matter so much so there we are that's the job all done I just popped in these little uh, support boards here 
to support the raised soil path and just here is my little path through to my neighbour Caroline and Peter's plot because uh, we like to just we're always walking backwards and forwards so that's a really nice little path for them okay so there's signing out on the uh, second hotbed and this is the final bit of the design um, these little coat hooks really nice chrome and smooth so they don't damage the bungee cords um, but they're really thick chrome uh, so they don't rust and then some little hooks in the top there and obviously you know with different like the bungee cords um, and even with this one for example you can just attach that here and that will support the frame in its open setting so uh, there we go all done So I'm just leaving you with a few pictures uh, to show you the uh, finished product and um, some pictures of today's crop, which I did quite wearily uh, once I'd just finished making the hotbed. So enjoy. <laughs>